from over here. They've got a three season room up there and then of course they have a second story balcony where they're gonna be looking down. So the waterfall will face back towards them and then the reservoir itself will be somewhere over into here. We're hoping that we can make light work of this project also while taking you guys along for the ride and teaching you some of the fun and efficient ways of building these little boutique waterfalls to help allow you guys to have more fun while doing it and for those of you trying to make money doing this, stay a little bit more profitable too. Chris and the rest of the gang all behind me and surrounding me. We are at a really fun project today. We're gonna to be doing a small pondless waterfall in a more residential backyard here in one of the, the suburbs, but it's a town right at the Illinois-Wisconsin border. We've got Luis, we've got Corey, we've got the new guy Garrett over here, and we have the canvas for the day. We are going to be doing a really fun pondless waterfall using granite, six small aqua blocks. I believe we have a 25 by 15 liner. And what else do we got over here? We've got a water waterfall vault. We've got 30 foot by 10 foot streamliner. We have a 12 inch waterfall spillway. We've got six small aqua blocks. We've got 25 feet of two inch pipe. Looks like we've got three one watt lights and then we have an SLD two to five pump. Of course we have our foam and some other little things in there or install kits but that's the amount of product that we're going to be using. Like I said we're going to be putting the pondless waterfall over in this area. We're going to try and capitalize the views. Let me walk over to where the waterfall is going to be. From over here they've got a three season room up there and then of course they have a second story balcony where they're going to be looking down so the waterfall will face back towards them and then the reservoir itself will be somewhere over into here so Brian's on his way he's going to be joining us today we're hoping that we can make light work of this project also while taking you guys along for the ride and teaching you some of the fun and efficient ways of building these little boutique waterfalls to help allow you guys to have more fun while doing it and for those of you trying to make money doing this stay a little bit more profitable too so we're gonna go ahead and mark out where the grass needs to get cut out, strip that sod, and then get the sod on the truck, which you see over there, and then get to digging. Okay. All right, so here's Luis. We got the sod cutter going. Order of business to get all this grass inside these orange lines, all out of here, all the way back into the trees. We wanna make this one nice, continuous bed line all the way down and through here. Corey's got the last fuel barrel side coming out. We got Jack and Dan over here. We have the reservoir marked out where it's gonna go. Next step is dig this. While three guys are gonna be digging this, the rest of us are gonna be moving dirt from the front of the yard to the back. So you guys got this? Okay, good. Let's go. many things out of order but when you have this many guys on a small project there's no way we could all fit in that little hole over there so you got Chris and Corey working on retaining walls you got Garrett bringing stone in the back you've got our moles over here groundhogs whatever you want <laughs> the rest of team aquas keep digging the hole over here this is gonna be a super cool project all right guys we're gonna keep moving along it's gonna be a great little pondless waterfall I'm sure Chris already talked about a waterfall coming this way twist and turn come down into that side the one thing we're keeping in mind here normally we take our aqua blocks set them um, a good six to eight inches lower than grade which gives us a pool here the thing is is nobody's gonna see that pool and this waterfall nobody would really see either we're just gonna set them a couple inches lower than grade because this waterfall would only be visible from down in like this area and nobody's really gonna sit over here now they could come back in here and put a little bench which would be awesome underneath this tulip tree and looking back up that way but the main view of course is from their screened in room up over here and the deck over in here there we go Yeah, Daniel digging out over here for that sweep. As the water comes down from here, it would obviously shoot the water this way, so we want to create a little bit of a cove back in here. And the other thing we're looking at, if a vault is sitting here, we'll have some rocks in front of the vault, and then a dry stream bed that comes off this way. So I know it's hard to make sense of it from here, but what I'll try to do is as we're putting all this in and the liner gets in, show you that again.
right hopefully that makes a little bit more sense you can see now the clear footprint of where the aqua blocks and the pondless vault go and then you can see where we dug out for that waterfall to come in we've got you know so a high side over in there so that water will drop down shoot across kind of carve out that area and then as we come over here it's carved out this area now we just got to make sure when we put the rocks in there we accentuate the curves that we've carved out and then what's nice is because this yard slopes so much like this it's really easy to do our dry stream overflow so this thing just looks like it kind of keeps going and going and going so next step fabric liner fabric say again fabric liner fabric one more time fine <laughs> i knew you'd screw it up <laughs> Okay, reservoir's in. There's that fabric liner fabric that Jack was talking about. Our six small aqua blocks. There's our pump vault over there that'll house our SLD two to five pump. The rest of the guys are working on excavating the rest of the stream. Stay busy. Now we're gonna start rocking the basin section. We'll kind of break up into teams and start rolling. see Jack getting ready to do the plumbing. Garrett's got the trench going in. Normally we lay the pipe down first, but in this case we didn't know exactly where the spillway was gonna go, so it was impossible to really hook that up. But, so now we're trenching back through all this. This will obviously have to get a little deeper in through here. We got our nice overflow put in. Just kind of continuation of the whole project makes it look like it just disappears off into the woods. And then I'm up here working on this waterfall. I think the key with this waterfall, I didn't want to get like this rock originally was standing more like this and then the height of this one over here really felt like a field goal post and so I laid this one way down when I did that it opened up this huge gap right in here because I have a big enough pump I got a two to five I'm gonna go ahead and embrace this and let water actually drop from back here drop back into here and then come around and split over this rock plus still have water to come over here this gaps a little weird right in here but I think I can fill that with some stone and some foam and nobody will really know maybe we have some I can play with and get that done. You can see Daniel and Garrett working on a retaining wall that has to come in here because the height of my berm is up in like this level someplace. So all of that soil has got to be retained. So as it washes, it, if we get a big rain, it doesn't wash and come down this way. So right now I'm just working on this. The idea is I keep working on this and everybody else comes in behind me doing edges, plumbing and everything else. All right, I just play with a couple of rocks. Doesn't look like much now, but do you remember that little separation? We had this rock and we were talking about it coming up and looking like a field goal post there. Leaning this down, now I get a little waterfall from back in there, comes around and then comes in between this. So I should get a bunch of water coming off of this and then an extra little thing coming over there by intentionally leaving that little separation. A lot of times it's easier just to push it close, but then all I get is the waterfall out of here. With a two to five pump on there, I should have plenty of water to handle that. So if it looks good now, we always say if it looks good dry, it's gonna look better wet. If you like it now, check it out now. How are you? Every now and then I get it right. We got our drop there and a little bit comes in and around there. Love doing these little beach areas. The beach areas are nice just cause, well, the birds love them. Bird beach, BB. <laughs> BB right in here, bird beach. This is great. They've got tons of feeders along the side of the house and stuff over in there. They're really into watching their birds. So they wanted something when they were sitting up here because they won't be able to see fish and stuff. They'll definitely see those birds going back and forth from the Norway spruces, the blue spruce down into this area. This sud thing is actually kind of a common occurrence. A lot of times the suds occur because the organics left in the gravel, organics and dust off the rocks, but usually disappear within 24 hours.
like that, a one day simple pondless stream is born. One and done. Sure gilly gilly? Gilly First. gilly. What do you think, man? Unbelievable. Top notch product, just happy customers, happy workers. What else can you ask for? Awesome, man. Good job today. Jack, what do you think, man? Yeah. 3.45, nice and early. Keep coming back Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays. Hit that subscribe button. Tell all your friends. We'd love to have them on our channel. Comment, let us know how we did. Ask any questions. Hopefully we did a good job explaining things. But until then, we'll see you guys on the next one.